Hi, I'm Ted with Perfetto Incorporated. We are a paint manufacturer here in Southern Illinois. I'm doing an old world painted pot video today and all the products that we use in this video we actually manufacture right here in Southern Illinois. The website is www.metallicmart.com. Let's get right into it and get started. I'm going to be briefly showing you how to do a finish that is very similar to these two pots here. Basically we're going to do an old world plaster dry brush finish. What I've got is a typical clay pot right here. This is a product called Bondego. It's a white base coat that is basically an extremely uh, durable exterior uh, latex paint. Uh, it works very good on these pots. So I'm use, let's get a little bit on a paper plate. I'm going to let this paper plate be my palette. cover that up real quick. I've got Blue Pearl. This is called Blue Pearl Colorant. We manufacture it. It's Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to put just a couple little drops on the plate. That's all I need. And I've got a, a green color called Spruce, which is uh, also um, one of the, our colorants. All I'm going to do now is I've got a little bit of Spruce and I've got a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to just mix up a really mild green here and I'm going to use a little bit of different tones. By not having it completely mixed together, I'm going to get some tones. I'll pick this pot up like this. I want to emphasize that every finish that we're doing on these pots, you could do on any surface. A piece of furniture, a wall, but these finishes look dynamite on these pots. I'll go ahead and just coat the entire pot with a little bit of this whitish green color. The reason it's kind of white and green is because I'm not thoroughly mixing the color in. Let's get a quick coat on there. I'm going to paint the inside of the pot as well as the bottom of the pot. Now what I also want to do is I just want to get a little bit of broken color going on here. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my green and I'm going to take a little bit slightly greener color. Basically the idea is you just want a little bit of broken color going on in the background, but be subtle. And if you get too much on, take a little bit of the white, take a little bit of the white and go back over it. Okay? And I'm holding the pot, I'll hold the pot upside down, same thing. Just get some, get some of the product on there and then come back by with a little bit of darker green that I'm adding to my white and give me a little bit of movement. I'll add a little Van Dyke Brown in there and a little bit of green. See how suddenly I've just got a little bit of stippled color on there? I just want a little bit of movement. I want a little bit of ver color variation going on. And if I get too much, just go right over it with a little bit of white and soften it up. You can just stipple it on with your brush. You could I want a little bit of extra green highlights, just stippling those in. Broken color, that's the idea, is just to have some subtle broken color going on in the background. Okay, now, we're going to put that aside, and again, I'm going to also paint the inside of the pot. Let's put that aside. And that's what I have here. I've done that to this very same pot, okay? Now, I'm going to put on my flat rock. I'll stick that brush. I'm going to use the same plate. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of Bondego on there. Flat Rock is a water-based plaster. It is very what we would call high solids, which, which is a fancy way of saying it doesn't have a lot of water in it, which gives you a lot of film build. Let's start putting on the Flat Rock plaster. Pop that lid off. Manufactured by Perfetto. P-E-R-F-E-T-T-O is the name of the company. I'm just going to get some of this Flat Rock and I'm going to put it on my same paper plate. Now, I don't necessarily have to tint it. I could. I could use these same colorants to tint the plaster to a greenish brown color. But I think I'm just going to put the, the flat rock on white. I just kind of stipple it all over. Not all over, but I kind of stipple it around a little bit. I think it looks good 
to have on a pot to have where it looks like the edge is chipped. So I'll just go down the edge here. In fact, what, what I like to do is just get a, a bunch of the plaster, just stick a bunch of the plaster on the pot, and then you can just kind of use the pot as your pallet, as your pallet. Okay, so I'd like to get it around the edges a little bit. Now how you put the flat rock on obviously is a very big, um, has a lot to do with how, what, what the finished pot's going to look like. You can just pat it on, stipple it on. I like to get some underneath this lip here and get some up on the edge. What's nice is too, let it dry off, let, let the plaster partially dry off. And just kind of think about where normally you might expect it to chip. Well, you might expect it to chip in the middle. You might expect it to chip a little bit around the edges. I like to work some in underneath this lip, work some in around the top of the lip so that it looked like, then I like to join the top and the bottom in some areas by stippling it on there. I'll show you another technique in just a second. You let this plaster dry off about 50% dry, maybe wait about 10 minutes, and then, you, and then you kind of come back with your palette knife you could just use a cheap putting knife from a hardware store. This is an artist uh, palette knife. Again, I like to work it all down that edge, stipple it and kind of work it in, and then come down the bottom edge like that, come around the top edge. I'm just using the white plaster right out of the bucket. Stipple some in here, just pat it on kind of with your knife. And then sometimes I like to join the top and the bottom to where it looked like it didn't chip as much right there. And you can come down and kind of smooth it out. I like to put it on, me personally, I like to put it on fairly thick. It's personal preference. It all has to do with your artistic eye. Spin the pot around, kind of even it out a little bit. Some areas may be more chipped looking than others. Pull some off, take it over here. Just, you want that green coming through, leave quite a bit of that green coming through, and then start smoothing those stipple marks out. Maybe clean off my palette a little bit and start. Um, if you have big areas that, that, that are open, just maybe just take a small amount and just kind of stipple it on the big areas. Pull that down. Whatever you don't like, just pull off, and then... <clears throat> now what looks really neat is if you kind of get that stipply look on there, then you let it dry, and after it dries, about halfway, so you let it dry 5-10 minutes, take your water, get a little bit of water on your palette knife, and then just, just smooth the stipple marks out. You can do it right away, or you can let it dry for about 5-10 to 10 minutes and, and get a little water on your palette knife. It's kind of like... Uh, the water, it's kind of like an ice cream scooper where you, you see them stick their ice cream scooper in the, in the water, okay, so that the ice cream doesn't stick to it. Same idea. Get a little bit of water on your palette knife and then lightly, just lightly spread it out. And that gives you some nice hard edges so it makes it look like it's really chipped. So I stippled it like that, and then I'm taking a damp trowel or a damp palette knife and I'm, I'm just kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Okay, we've got that done. Let's set that aside. I'll cover up my flat rock here. I'll get another plate. Now, I'm gonna use the same colors I used before to dry brush it. A little bit of spruce. Come on out, a little bit of spruce and a wee bit of Van Dyke Brown. And I've got Perfetto Glaze here. I don't necessarily have to use Perfetto Glaze, but the Perfetto Glaze allows these to dry slower. It slows down the drying time. You could just dry brush with these two colorants, or sometimes I stick my, well, that was the Bondego. Here's the Perfetto Glaze. Sometimes I'll stick a little bit of my brush and just get a little bit of Perfetto Glaze on there. I'll come in here 
and I'll rub it on my plate, which the Perfetto Glaze is a clear, slow drying medium. Then I'll take just a little bit of the spruce and I'll rub it in there and a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown to make it a little darker. I'm gonna take a little more Perfetto Glaze. Now, I'm gonna offload this a little bit on a paper towel. Let's do a little bit of offloading on the paper towel. Okay, like that. Now, I can. here's a pot that, is, it, that I put the flat rock on, it's dried. Let me just give it a quick light sanding because you'll have a little bit of crumbs hanging on there from just a very quick light sanding to knock off a lot of the little crumbs. I got my dry brush. Now watch, let's zoom in here and watch how this very lightly This dry brushing technique is critical in terms of making this pot look old. I've got a little bit of that color on here, the same color, and I use the tint, my Bondego, and I'm just lightly, almost like you're putting on makeup, which I'm pleased to report I've never put on makeup. I'm just saying it's my understanding that it's a lot like makeup, okay? Just do a little bit of, just tickle it, a very light, uh, drag that brush, just drag that brush across that plaster, and that color will start to pull off that color and then do more around the edges, go heavier around the edges. And then when you drag that brush across that flat rock plaster, the color pulls off around the edges of the plaster. So now the edges of the plaster look green and the inside of the plaster still looks white and it starts making it look old. So lightly dry brush it, both directions come back this direction, it's either heavy or light as you like but I like to go really light. I'm gonna dry brush this edge. Very lightly drag that brush across there. You can see, if the camera can zoom in here, you can see by just dragging that, that brush across that plaster, it's like magic. It starts looking old. If you get too much, just get a damp towel and just pat it and it'll come right off. Okay, notice how I'm, I'm putting a little bit heavier around the edges. And man, this thing is really really like magic starting to look quite old. See like right there, I got a little bit too much on there. Right there, no problem. I'm just gonna dip my paper towel, I don't really like that, and I'm gonna pull that out. Okay, so we're good. And that color is just pulling right off that brush and it's going right on to the edges of that plaster. Now don't, you know, less is more. You wanna do less. You don't wanna go super heavy. I'm just gonna drag it Get a little bit of Perfetto Glaze, a small amount of Perfetto Glaze on there to slow down the drying time of these colorants. Offload on my paper towel a little bit. There we go. Now look at the difference between that side, if you can zoom in close. Look at the difference between that side and that side. It looks completely different. So that's all there is to it. Once this is dried, you can take a coat of our clear Bondego if you want a top coat on it. You don't have to top coat it. It's very durable the way it is. But if you're gonna put it outside, you might want a thin coat of our Bondego clear. We've got our Bondego base coat, and then we've got our Bondego top coat. And we make it in flat, satin, and gloss. And you might wanna just put a, th a thin coat of, of a flat, maybe a satin, over this to kind of protect it. Again, don't really need to if you're going inside. If you're gonna put your pots outside, it'd be a good idea. Well, that's just about it for today. Uh, I think we've demonstrated how using a couple of products, we can take a, a pot that looked like just clay inside. And with just a few short steps, we've got a beautiful old world antique clay pot for our plants. The, the website's metallicmart.com and I appreciate y'all being with me today.
Here's our finished pot. And man, does it look old. That was easy using these Perfetto products. All the products that you see up here, all the pots, I'm sorry, that you see up here are the, basically the same technique, just slightly different colors. Thanks again for being with us.